Hello friends, welcome to Tech Greens. Uh, let's start uh, today's discussion on understanding Hadoop storage formats. So here in this video, we'll discuss what are the different HDFS file format systems available and what are the benefits and advantages of all these different storage systems. So guys, let's try to understand uh, why in the Hadoop ecosystem or in the HDFS world, we uh, need different kind of storage formats. What is the primarily uh, primary difference that uh, the storage formats in the HDFS world are altogether different? If we talk, if we compare them with any other file systems, be it Windows file systems or Linux file systems. So to understand the first and foremost, we first and foremost, we need to understand what is the storage format. In very simple words, storage format defines the way how data would be stored in the underlying file system. So whatever is the underlying file system, how we gonna save that file, how what would be the definition of that storage, that is what we call as storage format. Here in this particular context, we are specifically talking about Hadoop ecosystem in HDFS world. So in this uh, Hadoop ecosystem, there are some special Hadoop focused file formats which are used to persist data, whether the data is structured on and structured. There are some special categorization of formats which are used to store data in the HDFS. Now, some of the major storage formats which are available across Hadoop ecosystems and can be used in various, uh, you know, other Hadoop uh, world technologies like Hive can be used with different data processing uh, technologies like Spark, MapReduce. And some of these major formats are Parquet format, Evro format, sequence files, TSVs and CSVs, which are uh, flat text files and ORC, which is optimized uh, record, record columnar data format. So let's move forward. Now comes the another very important question. Uh, since we are talking about storage formats, uh, the question comes out why there is a need to find the right storage format. Now, there are a couple of uh, important factors that we need to keep in mind while selecting the right storage format for our use case and for our situation. First is, you know, in terms of if you look uh, towards the modern lake architecture, whatever the data is stored in HDFS lakes is fully denormalized. So here the data is already elaborate. We're not trying to you know, normalize any data and want to say reduce its size, size or reduce the redundancy in any which ways. So when we are trying to populate the data into the lake, it's fully denormalized and thus its size increases. And at the same time, HDFS uh, or Hadoop ecosystem has already got a replication factor to deal with the fault tolerance. And you know, if we specifically talk about HDFS, you know, replication factor is three. So there would be three copies of each file you want to store in the HDFS. And we are already talking about big data scenarios where we're talking uh, uh, at the scale of petabytes and terabytes of data. So you can imagine if we do not select the right storage format, probably this storage cost would go high at an infinite level because we are trying to persist big data, uh, big data uh, scenario, which is in the scale of say terabytes and petabytes. Second factor, and uh, this is more important than the first factor comes into the place, uh, which is the processing cost. Now, as you all understand, this Hadoop ecosystem is a distributed programming paradigm where data data processing happens on different nodes in a cluster. Now, during the processing, it also may require that some data needs to move from one node to the another over the wire. And if we do not select the right storage, 
if the data is not lean and properly uh, uh, properly serialized and deserialized in the most optimum way it will choke down our cpu and network bandwidth because during the distributed processing data may need to move across nodes over the wire uh, and if it will uh, if uh, the data is not properly format when we will move the heavier data over the cpu and network it will gonna increase the processing cost so these are uh, two major factors apart from that there are a couple of uh, more factors which we take into account for the basic functioning uh, of the distributed programming paradigm like uh, whatever format we select should be such that it could be splittable because the way we store data in hdfs is you know in the smaller blocks the data needs to be split into uh, smaller blocks which is of 128 mb and needs to be put across in hdfs so uh, these are some reasons which help us to zero in on the right storage format for our HDFS or for our lake. Now, as we have already discussed, let's uh, you know, reiterate what are the advantages you're gonna get if for uh, you're gonna get uh, for choosing the right formats. First is, you know, if your data is right. Uh, optimized in terms of storage and processing you will gonna get faster reads your data retrieval query would be optimized uh, you gonna get effective compression if your date if you choose the right format then based on that format if you choose the corresponding compression codec you will get effective compression ratio which will result in your storage optimization obviously needless to say if you choose the right format you would have faster writes because reads and write depends how the data uh, format gonna be while persisting the data uh, fourth as we already discussed that the nature of the file format whatever we sh whichever we select should be such that it could be distributive when we say distributed that file format should be um, such that it could be split and provide you random read access uh, fifth and the last advantage which you can which you want to get out of choosing the right file format is that it will support your schema evaluation and support the dynamic schema because out of the five v's of big data one of the v's is variety so you never know which variety of data is coming to the system it may or may not adhere to a fixed schema so uh, whatever whichever format we select should be such that that it provides you the support for schema evolution and dynamic schema handling now another thing which we need to look forward from the storage format perspective is the compression the compression is a big role to play because as we already discussed uh, we are talking about the data in the scale of petabytes and terabytes and we want to persist it on the disk uh, for that we need to choose the right compression so that we can save ourselves on storage cost. Now, um, in the Hadoop world, there are two type of, or we can say two level of compressions are provided. One is the first level compression. This is a general compression which work across in any other file system and not specific to Hadoop, so to speak. It compresses the entire file regardless of whatever is the file format. So it is uh, the wrap over, or as we say it, it's a first level compression which doesn't take into account what is the format of the storage and just wraps or wraps around and compresses the entire file now which is similar to how compression works in any other file system be it linux file system or be it windows file system now the second level of compression which is specific to the hadoop world is the block level com compression block level compression is internal to this specific file format when we say internal it means that here individual blocks how the file is already split and stored say into the hdfs those individual blocks of data within a specific file are compressed so it gives you uh, another dimension in terms of compression where even if you use a non-splitable compression codec like snappy 
and try to use the block level compression, even that you can keep your file splitable and distributive. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll prefer to repeat myself here. What I'm trying to say, the advantage that you get when you use the block level compression is when obviously it gives you a higher level of compression ratios because you can compress the individual blocks and the smaller pieces of the file, how the file is distributed onto the HDFS uh, system. Second is, it gives you a liberty to even choose any kind of compression codec. That compression codec, or when I say codec means that kind of compression algorithm, which may not be in itself distributive or splitable, but we have already putting the uh, you know compression on the uh, splitable smaller pieces. So, so that keeps the entire file as distributive or splitable, right? Now, let's look at some of the common compression codecs available in the Hadoop ecosystem, LZO, Snappy, which is a common, which is a very uh, common and most used compression codec and uh, primarily gives the perfect compression ratio specifically with Parky file formats, bzip, lib2, and zzip. These are some of the common compression codecs available in the HDFS world. So that's it uh, guys in this particular video. In the next coming videos, uh, I'll talk in detail about some of the major storage formats like Parky, Evro, ORC, what is the advantages, disadvantages, use cases for this particular, for all these particular and specific file formats, how they're differing from each other and what are the different technologies or processing systems working work best with which kind of storage formats so guys once again thanks for watching the video keep learning may god bless you all and one thing more do subscribe to my channel thanks have a good day bye bye